Science Pixie back. Um, I think I'll do a, a rehash of all this um, video stuff I've been doing earlier. I may use some of it, I don't know yet. Um, yeah, basically I was looking at missing people. Um, some missing people go missing before um, normal reasons, like they have a broken home, bad background, and they just want to disappear off the grid. Now, these become a vulnerable group. The ones that go off the grid and turn up again, that's fine. They'd, they're kind of survivalists, they've survived so far, and when it gets to the point where they can't survive much more, you know, on the streets with nobody, uh, they come up on the system, they ask for help, and then they turn up, and then they, they all go back into sort of being known again, and they stop being missing. Um, but they become a vulnerable group. Now, for some of them, they go permanently missing, and these become abducted by, um, abducted by our society. Uh, it's not all rosy and sweet. There are people out there, crime organisations, that will quite happily scoop up people to use as their um, human trafficking. And you know how that works. There's basically sex slaves or slave labour. They might enter into a uh, crime family. They might be use threats and all sorts to control them. And then you've got other areas where people, um, the more human ritualistic um, types, like um, people that are more into um, demonic beliefs, um, some elite factions that are um, some old family Satanists that have these um, beliefs of self that they've taken to a completely another level and um, would quite happily abduct someone for to serve themselves, to serve their agenda, to serve their needs, um, whether that's be spiritual, sexual, um, you know, s sadistic and all sorts. Somebody doesn't have a name or doesn't exist in a system, very easy to exploit. That person might be trapped in his little dungeon for years. I mean, some of these people um, have mental illnesses, but to be honest, a mental illness means they're more subjected to behaviour or influences outside of what they would normally um, to uh, because we initially none of us are um, none of us are born evil some of us are born with different type of emotional patterns I guess these are the psychopaths and they can draw upon um, negative influences to um, you know create their own reality and um, in order to feed this reality they use other people and that's their survivalist type um, nature I mean some of these people we might see as demonically possessed I mean it's different areas of possession, some people are susceptible to different types of um, influences. Um, basically, we're multi-dimensional beings, our range of emotions, um, our mental capacities and so on, uh, what formulate our being, our soul conscious, um, where you could say it's the spirit, it goes into the body, the body itself is the soul. Um, it is the alchemy of your um, life form, and um, you draw from that experience, and then you go to your next life, and and so on. Um, you've got elitists that would like to find ways to live forever. Um, their experiments on people are to do that. There's no there's no mystery that people disappear off the grid, being used for medical experiments, being used for military experiments or being just used for general experiments, <laughs> full stop. It's just as, you know, like I say, it falls into other criteria that someone's needs. They may want to, um, say, use them as a breeding program. Um, you've had it where, basically, with some of these um, human elitist groups that wanted to separate themselves from the rest of us, um, they have either bred with other families that are related to them, or they will search out certain people with characteristics that they can breed with as well. So um, when we talk about the blue bloods, um, they have some um, certain alien genes, uh, factions, um, controllers, the controller genes in, in them, and they wish to keep them as strong as healthy as possible. I mean, all they technically mean is that they can. Um, when I touched upon possession, possession of people and uh, multi-dimensions of ourselves. I mean, within yourself, you, there's different situations. You can actually come to take on different types of personalities. Now, some of this is because your existence um, is, even your spirit is a, has a, a multi-dimension to it. So there's a darker side to your nature. Um, with people with these alien controlling genes, um, there's soul, something called soulmancy. 
and um, basically you your spirit could take possession of another body or another object um, it's not impossible for humans to do these sorts of things that you can meditate on an animal or something and because it doesn't have an active soul in the same way you have um, or um, the active spirit is that you can take over it like something like uh, something automated automated type life um, I mean, I, I think one day I was watching um, a, uh, a butterfly. I was watching something, just a moth going round and round in circles. And I'm thinking, how many times have you got to hit into something before you realise it's there? And I realised that maybe its intelligence system is automated. It's like an AI. I mean, if you had to control the whole universe uh, with, with an intelligence system, it would be too much to give it individual direction but set it up with a programme. And all that happens, I mean, if, if my spirit isn't in my body, it, it operates on its own. Um, it, but you, you go off into, well, when you walk around in a daydream, um, that's where you, you're on automatic, um, and your conscious levels are reduced, and your consciousness elsewhere. Um, it could be that you're actually incarnated in many forms um, throughout the universe, and that you're an operating system across, across space and time. Um, anyway, so... Certain types of people have got certain genes. Um, DNA operates on a type of frequency system. Um, it contains um, your total um, history of where you was born before and so on. Your past life memories and information has been sort of downloaded into this hard drive. Um, you send out signals. You receive signals with your DNA. It governs your body and it governs your form. So if you change your DNA, well, you also change your form. We'll touch upon that in a bit. Basically, somebody has the same frequency, it means that you could, high, in theory, hijack them. Um, so if you've got an alien being that's trying to run the planet, it creates a, um, a, um, a hierarchy system where you've got um, uh, an elitist faction that governs the ones below them, and it, it gives them that role. So they're the general in chief. And then what it has the ability to do, if, if it requires, can go into that person's um, soul matrix, because that's what your body is in an energetic form, and um, influence their core thinking. So it's that's that way. Um, so you just influence their thoughts towards your goals. And if you're already in some type of um, uh, hyper dimension, there's, there's two different dimensions I mentioned. There's um, anything that's below you, would be a hypo dimension. It's a lower frequency, like you know, anything like shadowy forms. Anything above would you see as a hyper dimension, like a more angelic, angelic form, simply because the vibration and frequency is higher. So, like light, where light comes down, um, but shadow is more the hypo. And within this this state of sort of, um, we're kind of in a, in an area of a spectrum, a spectrum of this reality. We're somewhere in the middle. Um, we're not totally in the, in, in the middle, but I think we're probably closer to um, some fire elements. Um, but I'll sort of cover more of this stuff in my books. Um, so you have um, identities that operate on different levels, um, different energetic systems. There's a need to um, for control of the elite to hijack people's bodies. There's people that look for um, energetic sources and forms in other people. So there's a market for human life. There's some of them that would want to delete or remove um, threats to their bloodline. Um, you've got different uh, governmental, uh, government research um, projects like Cronus, um, where you look at the, sort of the time continuum. Um, taking somebody out of a different area of time can remove them as a threat um, to a later generation, especially if they have the capacity to go back and forth in time and, um, and see the cause and effects of um, events. The universe uses a type of, um, it, it runs, this, this universe around us is Tenneke's waveform, um, uh, dimension forms is kind of like a particle or this, this um, field by which it operates, like an operating system. Um, there's several simulations running at the same time and um, basically there's, there's a future version of me that's taking different actions and um, and these are cause and the cause consequences, and um, time is, is one of the illusions that's sort of created in order to 
allow things to operate in frames rather than operate all at once. If you operate at once, it's just a big blur and it's a big mess. Um, like white sound, you know, if you put white sound and mix music in there, you'd find it impossible to tell the music. Um, when you're in a room of talk, people that are talking, your mind can be able to filter. It has the uh, type of a way to separate and filter out voices and conversations, information. But from outside of that, it's just a big blur of sound. So you create the way by which you can separate things. So like frequency, so we talk about sound, you know them by frequency. You can tell somebody who they are by their voice. Um, it operates that frequency and it gives that fingerprint of that person. So um, looking at missing people, um, people are removed as well because they are, could, potentially they would have threat, they might have the bloodline that could create a rival faction or a problem in the future. So if you can remove them from the equation, that's, that's fine. You've got, in the past, people wanted to find, formate their own groups and they wanted to do it in a particular way. There would be uh, more pure bloodlines. You've got what happened in the past with Illuminati, um, seeking out the mystery truths of the world. Um, basic throughout history has been cataclysms. Uh, knowledge has been kept secret and safe. This knowledge has come back into light. Um, elitist factions have kept this knowledge and then they've, they've taught in certain select uh, groups. Um, so you've got some major powerful groups in the world that are united under the same umbrella and they formulate the sub their uh, shadow government. Um, some of these smaller mystery groups um, were funded and then they've, they've, they've developed their own factions. So you've got um, what you've got is the